Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Allison Sheffield. And I'm Steve Sheffield. Welcome to our home in Massachusetts. We would love to show you around. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Hi, I'm Allison Sheffield. I'm an interior designer. Hi, I'm Steve, uh, Steve Sheffield, and I'm an artist. We live in a bow roof cape on the south coast of Massachusetts. I would describe my style as pretty traditional, but with a kind of quirky bent to it. I try to introduce a lot of modern touches. What you'll see in our home today is a lot of color and pattern and texture, a lot of art. We had been living in Boston for about 10 years when we decided to move to the suburbs. And we looked at about seven houses in one day. And when we found this charming cape, it is a very traditional looking home. Um, it's about 100 years old. It's a reproduction of an even older house. And it's such a good reproduction that when people come to visit, they are often surprised that it's only 100 years old. It's got the scale of an old house, it's got all the charming details, and it has just been the perfect home. It's cozy, but gracious. I would say that my particular style that we've sort of translated into the space is colorful and textured and layered with lots of pattern. Pretty traditional, you'll see a lot of traditional forms, but we've added um, quirky accents and unusual, unexpected details that give it a much more um, modern feel and um, nothing fussy. Our home is about um, maybe a half a mile from the ocean and something that caught our eye about the house was the shape of the roof line, which is a bow roof, which I guess imitates or mimics the hull of a ship and it, it's very charming, we loved it. Quintessentially New England, a very unusual feature, yeah. and we just were so taken with it. One of my favorite things hanging in the space is unexpected, and it's this set of photographs taken by my husband. I think that it is um, unexpected in its subject matter, in its size, and I just love the impact that this makes. It's kind of an untraditional formal entry room. I love it because it's so unexpected. Just inside the front door, I have a chest of drawers. I tend to use them in unexpected places because I find them such great pieces for taking up space and for storage. This one I found at a local consignment store and hanging above it is a fantastic Art Nouveau heavy, heavy, heavy brass mirror from the same consignment shop. And I love the juxtaposition of the two different styles. We have our dragon lamp, a few favorite accessories. The mini Nantucket baskets were woven by my mother. And this is the first of many vintage needlepoint pieces you'll see hanging around the house. And the first piece of art Stephen and I ever bought together, um, it was at an arts auction yeah. in Boston, and it was the very first piece we collected together. Another thing we've spent years collecting is antique rugs and two of our um, vast collection are here in the space. We've got this beautiful runner and this jewel-toned area rug here, and I love the contrast between them and the leopard runner that runs up the stairs. Another thing I have to mention about this space is that the walls are actually stenciled. Um, right at the beginning <laughs> of lockdown, I had been planning on wallpapering the space, but when we were stuck at home, I got the crazy idea to stencil the walls. Um, it's not a small space. This area is kind of small, but there are three doors here, and there are five more down the hallway. So eight doors, five corners, and we hand stenciled <laughs> this. I ordered the stencil online and used leftover paint from my oldest bedroom, and we stenciled them. The effect is wonderful. I absolutely love it, but I will never <laughs> attempt stenciling walls again, but it really is stunning. It probably took us weeks to get the 
a few weeks to get the vast majority of them done. Yep. But it wasn't until about a year ago that we filled in all of the nooks and crannies. All like the little like this, areas and little things. This yeah. piece was unpainted for a few years after lockdown, but it just was had been such a daunting project that I tucked it away for a long time. Here in this corner, we have hanging a few of my favorite pieces. In fact, these two were some of the first pieces we collected at our Art Center's annual arts festival. We purchased these two. The rest have been collected over time from artists that I know from Instagram, from vintage sellers I know from Instagram, and my husband, um, one of his collages is at the bottom here. Tucked behind the door is a framed Hermes scarf with a nautical theme and a few more of my husband's pieces. These are um, finger, fingerprint cards. Do you want to talk about them? Um, these, well, it's a, it's a funny process, but this is a combination of uh, cyanotype and Van Dyke brown printing. Um, it's a photographic, a, a vintage photographic process on fingerprint cards that I found in a junk shop from a fingerprint kit. <laughs> That detectives would take to the, the crime well, scene. The detectives would take to the crime scene and dust for prints and things. And I used the cards uh, to put the, uh, these photographs that are sort of crime-themed photographs on these cards. And I like them tucked behind the door. <laughs> I love them. But I love that they're a surprise, which is another thing we've done throughout the house. We have art hanging on doors and behind doors um, because we run out of wall space. And so we got creative. <laughs> This is a wreath that I bought during the Christmas season. It's made out of scallops? No, mussels. Yes, mussel shells. Mussel shells by a local artist. Um, it was intended to be up just for the holidays, but I loved the color so much that we've just left it up. And then on the other side of the door, we have a pretty dried boxwood wreath. Um, the house is white with black shutters, and I love the pop of green that the wreath adds to the front of the house. Now I'd love to show you my home office. Follow me. Welcome to my home office. Um, I think it's a little unexpected because it is very color drenched and a lot of people like to work in a more neutral space, but I really feel more creative and invigorated by the color and the pattern we've used in this space. In this space, we have another one of my um, vintage rugs. This one has a gorgeous ivory background, and I just love how it brightens the space. Another thing we were really conscious of when we left the city was how to reuse furniture that we'd had in Boston. Um, in my office now, we have this big cabinet. It used to hold china in the city, but here it holds my fabric swatches. Another thing I mentioned in the front hall about mirrors in rooms. I add them to every space. There's probably one in every room in our house, yeah. except I think the kitchen. Um, this mirror here in the corner with its bamboo details, I just love how it reads against the dragons. Again, it bounces some light, it adds some sparkle. I just think um, a mirror adds so much to a room. We collect art from all different sources. Above my desk, I have two of my all-time favorite photographs. These are from um, 20 by 200, which is a great resource for collecting original pieces of art. As soon as I saw the dragon wallpaper, I knew I had to use it in my house, and I finally decided that this was the space for it. I absolutely love how playful and engaging it is. I used some leopard print on the windows to sort of tamp it down. <laughs> That's not the right way to describe it, but to <laughs> sort of set off the dragons. I love chinoiserie. I love animal print and getting to use both in this space is just a thrill, a thrill for me. I have my work table here, my desk here. My husband and I are collectors. We have a lot of treasures around the house, including here in my office. Let me show you a few over here. This etagere in my office is where I store a lot of my design books, but it also is filled with special treasures. Um, this in particular is one of my favorites. It is a spun cotton dragon um, made by an artist on Etsy. I actually collect a lot of her work. I'll show you some more throughout the house, but we have him up here. Um, this used to be the nightlight in my boys' room in Boston. And even though they are teenagers now, I couldn't part with it. So I keep it here 
um, in my office, just as a reminder, there's even a little Lego character. I don't know what he is. Yeah. He's like a wrestler <laughs> with a robot head um, that I just keep by it. Um, quirky details just make me happy and they're throughout the house. Over in this corner of my office, I have a tiny, elegant Burlwood console table that just fills the space perfectly. In this corner, I have some of my all-time favorite pieces. Um, this is an artist friend of mine. He paints on Hermes bags. This is one of my all-time favorites. This is Blackout Poetry. Um, it's an article in a newspaper, and the artist, Austin Cleone, has blacked out everything except a few words. So it reads, I mean, yes, we're sinking, but the music is exceptional. And it just gives me chills. Um, this is by a dear friend, some favorite books and objects. Now let me show you our living room. Follow me. Welcome to our living room. This is a charming space full of that wonderful detail I mentioned. Um, you can see here on this wall is the first of four fireplaces we have on the first floor of this home. And it's next to this really charming petite built-in this is our pup, Evie, our angel. Um, I added the neutral zebra wallpaper because I knew that we were going to fill this room with so many elements that were colorful that I wanted to create a really nice backdrop yep. for them. To complement the neutral walls, I chose this really vibrant, jewel-toned Harris for the floor, and it gives the room just a wonderful, cozy warmth. We've hung a lot of art in here. Um, we have two gallery walls flanking the door to the dining room. They are a combination of watercolors, photography, collage. Some are old, some are new. We've got mirrors and a John Darian piece. Um, eclectic, but the color story, it all just works beautifully together. In this far corner, I actually have a bell pull that my grandmother embroidered many years ago. And I may have permanently borrowed it from my mother's house <laughs> because it was just too perfect to pass up. Um, I had to hang it in this room. Over here is another of my framed needlepoint pieces. This is one of my favorites. It is a woman with her dog who looks a lot like mine. Um, I love the size, I love the subject matter. It came framed and I just couldn't resist all of it. I was an avid needle pointer when I was growing up, but I had stopped needle pointing for many years until lockdown when I picked it up again and I have not really stopped needle pointing since. In addition to all of the vintage pieces I've collected, I've been adding my own um, pillows and things of that nature. I have two Nantucket baskets, one woven by my mother, one woven by my father-in-law that hold a ton of the ornaments that I've made over the years. This is an especially cozy room in the winter and I spend most of it sitting in this chair stitching. So I've been an avid stitcher for many years and I'm thrilled to announce that in late November I am coming out with my own collection of needlepoint canvases in conjunction with a gingham stitchery based in St. Louis. I am absolutely over the moon about it. It was a dream collaboration for me. This secretary. Um, this is something that I've had for many, many years. It was a hand-me-down from my mother. Um, we had it in Boston, we have it here. Here, we use it to display more of our treasures. Um, it is filled with things from ceramics painted by my children to my Nancy Drew, a small portion of my Nancy Drew collection from growing up, some um, tiny hair and animals, um, family photographs, just things that I love. Um, and I have here a set of my favorite books, um, more ceramics by my children. Every object in this piece of furniture makes me happy when I look at it. In this corner I have this room's mirror. It is a very traditional colonial style set off between two pagoda lamps. I actually love how the curves of each play off one another. It hangs over a mahogany table. And in this corner, I have two of my favorite needlepoint pieces. And I just love how they finish the space. I mentioned earlier how we hang art 
on and behind doors because we've run out of wall space. Um, this is a perfect example. This is a portrait from the 1960s done by a Ukrainian immigrant who ended up on the North Shore and it is this lovely woman in this beautiful pink dress with her gloves. Um, I fell in love with her as soon as I saw her. When I got her home, I realized that we had no more wall space. So we hung her here on the door. I, we have a lot of doors in this house. Um, and when they're open, they're just big blank yep. swaths of white. So hanging art on them um, gives me that space that I need, but also um, just covers what would otherwise be sort of a blank spot in the room. And we've named her Ginny. Oh, and her name is Ginny. <laughs> her name is Ginny, and we have a whole story about her. Um, she's just one of my favorite, favorite pieces. The first time I saw Ginny, she was hanging in one of my favorite local antique shops. Yeah. And I was so tempted to get her, but I didn't. But one of my dearest clients did, and I helped her place Ginny in her home. Her name wasn't Ginny at the time. I helped <laughs> place Ginny, uh, the painting, in my client's home, and I loved her from afar. And then my client moved and had no room for Ginny and offered to sell her to me, and I jumped at the chance. Um, we named her Ginny for two reasons. Yeah. First of all, because we just assumed she might be a gin drinker. <laughs> and because we bought this home from the loveliest owners. They yep. were so gracious to us. They had taken such good care of this house. Um, we felt like we were taking a beloved home off their yeah. hands to infuse it with they our They gave us hugs love. at the yeah. end. <laughs> they, yeah, were was, they were so and nice. her name was Ginny. So this is in honor of, um, of, in honor of that Ginny. Yeah. We can't leave this room without showing you two of our very favorite pieces of art. As we mentioned, we'd been city dealers for a long time, and as thrilled I was, as I was to move into this home, I was emotional about leaving our city home. And I, we'd been in town for about a week when I stopped into our local art center right down the road here, and hanging in the gallery across the room yep. from me was this painted painting by a local artist of Newbury Street in Boston. This block is one we walked thousands of times over the year. Yeah. Our boys' school was right around the corner from it. It was just our stomping grounds. And I saw this and I felt like it had been painted for me. It is an unglamorized painting of Newbury Street with an ADT truck and a ladder on a station wagon and it's just an everyday moment captured yeah. our old life and we have it now in our new life here. The colors, everything about it brings yep. me um, wonderful nostalgia. And I want Stephen to talk about this other fantastic piece hanging yeah, next to this, it. This piece is by a, a photographer friend of mine uh, named Frank Armstrong. And he is a, uh, I guess you'd call him a journeyman photographer, where he will just travel and travel and take pictures everywhere. And I think this photograph, I think might be from the 80s, maybe the 70s, but we just got such a kick out of the name, the human store. And it's sort of, you know, odd. it's odd. <laughs> it's like, what the hell goes kind on in there? Um, but we just love it. It's just this beautiful just moment in time, and we just love looking at it. Okay, let's head off into the dining room. This is our dining room. We chose this gorgeous charcoal grass cloth as the backdrop. We brought this light fixture from the city. It had been a custom Sputnik we had made for one of the spaces in Boston, and I couldn't resist leaving it behind. So we brought it here and hung it in the dining room. I love that it is sort of a traditionally brass light fixture, but in a really unexpected shape. We've also used many different shapes um, of light bulbs just to give it a little bit more visual interest. Not that it was lacking, but I love the effect. It hangs over this dining table, which was the dining table yeah, of my yeah. dreams. Um, I had searched high and low. This was what I wanted. I could not find one anywhere. I didn't want to buy a new one. I wanted an old one. It has these stunning Ming legs. It's solid. There's no leaves. It's just what it is. It fits just perfectly in the space. Heavy. 
we had joked that we were going to end up using the box that our snowblower came in as our dining room table because we, <laughs> we, I couldn't find one. Just as we were talking about that, this came into my yeah. life through that same consignment store, um, and I couldn't love it more. It's elegant, but not too formal. It's just perfect in the room. And we, it was really fun to get in the house. Yeah, it's it <laughs> very heavy, very heavy, and you have to maneuver it through all the doorways, yeah. but worth it. And we've paired it with these wonderful chairs. This is a Philippe Stark design for Cartel. It has the silhouettes of three famous mid-century modern chairs incorporated. There's the Series 7 chair by Arnie Jacobson, Saarinen's Tulip chair, and Eames' Eiffel chair. And you can see sort of how they're each shown, but woven together in this really elegant, unexpected yep. chair. Um, they're made out of plastic. They're indoor-outdoor. They stack. But there's something about them that I find yeah. deeply elegant, and I love that we use plastic chairs in our dining room because yeah. it's just, um, it sounds so ridiculous, but really they're just lovely. Yeah. And speaking of plastic chairs, we also use the ubiquitous ghost chairs at the ends because um, I do love how weightless yeah. they are, how they visually disappear, um, because we often are seeing more than four people in this room. We celebrate Christmas in here. We celebrate family birthdays in yep. here. I chose this wonderful graphic fabric for our window treatments, and I love how it contrasts with the more formal um, antique Chinese Art Deco rug on the floor. This rug was um, another one of those unexpected, perfect finds. Perfect find. It has the blue jewel tones that we wanted. It has the gray of the wallpaper. It's got these warm browns that look wonderful against the floor. And it introduced this wonderful plum to the space, yep. um, which just warms it up so beautifully. For art in this room, we have more favorite pieces. This is a stunning painting of peonies by a local artist. This is an iPhone photograph taken by Stephen of our youngest and his friends on a dock on Cape Cod. And it just reads so beautifully against the dark gray walls. This piece over here was a wedding gift from my father and stepmother, also from a local a Boston artist. Below this painting is a lovely sideboard that was a hand-me-down from my dad. And right across from it is a piece from my consignment shop that is very similar um, and it's a really nice scale to the room and the house. Um, this is where we keep most of our china now. And this corner has more of our favorite art. The temple jars, the painting, that was a 50th birthday gift. This photograph is one of our very favorites. Uh, the thing about this photograph, I, I used to, uh, for about 15 years, I taught at a place called the New England School of Photography, and one of my fellow teachers, uh, faculty members was a street photographer and he took this in the neighborhood where we used to live which was also where the school was and it's just perfect for who we are and what we do and it says I have all the art and it's just this sort of <laughs> odd street moment in, moment time. in time that just sort With of is perfect I mean, yeah. <laughs> um, so. so this is an all-time favorite we laugh every time we look at it um, and then I have three of my um, Blue Willow divided plates hanging here, which I find deeply charming. Over here is the second fireplace on our first floor, and above it is a very striking photograph. The history of, of this photograph is I was uh, commissioned to make a really large piece of art for a, a restaurant in Boston called uh, Row 34, and I was having the hardest time trying to find the right way to represent or to, to put a graphic image on their wall. And then I stepped out of my studio, which was this floor of this building, and I just looked up and I was like, oh my God. And I took that because it was a misty day and it just had this beautiful, and that's what they loved. And I also was so struck with it that uh, uh, we wanted to have this in our home as well. And we love the graphic. I just kicked the pigeon. 
uh, the, uh, the graphic um, of it compared to the other sort of design elements in the room. I also have to mention my Hessian soldier, soldier and irons, which are yeah. um, just sweet and a little bit silly, their pose, but um, I just love them, their jaunty look in our fireplace, which still has the original kettle hanging. Yep. Um, an array of blue and white across the mantle. This mirror, our dining room mirror, is a piece that hung in my boys' room in the city. And when we moved here, um, I just couldn't resist hanging it against the texture of the grass cloth because it, itsel it itself has this wonderful textured finish to it. Now, please join us in our favorite room in the house, our butler's pantry turned home bar. Welcome to our home bar. Um, originally built as a butler's pantry, we turned it into a home bar. Um, we've been cocktail enthusiasts for many years. We actually designed a cocktail bar in Boston called the Hawthorne. And one of the things we missed most about the city when we got here was the lack of good cocktails. Um, so we created this space so we could make them at home. Um, it's also the space where every Friday since the week before lockdown, we have hosted an Instagram, an Instagram cocktail hour. Um, it's called Sheffield Cocktail Hour. And every Friday night, we mix a drink from this space and um, share it with our um, fellow cocktail loving enthusiasts. Yep. And um, it started on a lark. It um, ended up sort of being a lifeline through the pandemic and it's just turned into a habit. I don't know when we'll stop, but we've really enjoyed, um, we've really enjoyed the yeah. camaraderie and community that we've found. Right, and there's a, there's a, we haven't missed a Friday. In four and a half years. In four and a half years, and I don't think we've repeated a drink. I don't think we have either. On the counters here, we keep our recipe books. Um, we keep sort of mixers and other cocktail making elements under here. On this side, we store all of our glassware. And then um, I have one fun thing to show you before we move on into another space that we love. Um, this is our emergency cabinet, and we keep in it a fire blanket, flashlights, and gin, just in case. And hanging on the knob is this cheeky needlepoint piece that says retox, detox, and we turn it depending on the day of the week. And now let me show you where we keep our liquor. Once we ran out of counter space, we decided that we would use this unloved storage closet in our front hall to turn into our sparkly secret liquor storage. So back in January, I got the idea that we were gonna transform the space. I had always loved this wallpaper. It's um, a bamboo trellis with leopard. And when it came in the metallic, I couldn't resist. So we hung the wallpaper, painted the shelves, and stocked it with all of our liquor. Um, it is a joy to open every Friday before cocktail hour. Yeah. We've added some fun lighting. There's even some art hanging on the door. Now join us in the powder room. This is our powder room. Um, a dear friend of mine jokes that it's the only powder room she's ever seen with its own foyer. Yeah. This is a long space. And when we got here, there was a massive vanity along this wall behind Stephen um, that took up a lot of the room. It was actually a, a bit grander than we actually wanted yeah. in the space. We also were, we still had our laundry in, washer dryer in the basement and our basement isn't when you come down the, t the stairs, it's not then you immediately turn the corner and go down another set of stairs to the basement. Our laundry is actually like as far away as possible from the upstairs. So I really wanted to move the washer and dryer up here. We removed the enormous vanity as well as a built-in makeup table yep. um, at the end of the room here and had just enough space to move a stacked washer dryer up here. And it was transformative. Um, no more late nights at 10 p.m. and you're like, oh, I forgot to move the laundry to the dryer and headed to the basement, it's right here. And it's, um, it's just been super convenient. 
In addition to that, when we moved the washer and dryer up and removed the huge vanity, we selected a um, vintage sideboard to use as a sink stand and a vessel sink. And we have a Moroccan mirror over the sink with some lanterns flanking it. And then we've filled the space with art that we love. In addition, um, we added this short wall. Breaking up the space allowed us to put a chest of drawers in here for storage. It's um, a hammered nickel piece that I think is unexpected, and it's set off by a collection of more of our fun and quirky art. Above the dresser, we have some of our favorite pieces of art, including photography, needlepoint, painting, um, and then beyond the wall is more of our favorite art, including this piece Stephen's going to talk about. This uh, piece is by my uh, nephew, William Austin, and uh, he was in art school in uh, Chicago. And we just love it. It's quirky. It's a, a lithograph, an addition lithograph. Uh, and it's called The Baby, but Allison and I like to call it Kung Fu Baby because he looks like he's... <laughs> I'm going to take you to our family room, but first I want to show you a few more pieces we have hanging in the hallway. Right here is a wonderful painting of a city stoop in Boston, and my dad and stepmom live in an area of Boston full of brownstones, and this always makes me think of my dad. This is another needlepoint piece, and I love two of these together. They, the colors are so complementary. Um, the greens, the tree, the trees, I just think it's a unique pairing, and I Love them both. Another small collection of work we have here. Um, this is a very favorite photograph by Stephen um, that we affectionately call Big Baby. And it hangs next to a pastel portrait of my mom when she was an actual baby. We have this fun embroider embroidered bug, a Boston city skyline, and more vintage needlepoint. And then through this doorway is our family room. Welcome to our family room. This room came with a stunning set of bookshelves and built-in cabinetry where we display art books and photo books and novels we've read and um, books about design as well as treasures that we've collected over the years. Over in this corner we keep a lot of books about music and my husband has his um, record player. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, my small, uh, uh, there's a, this is a small portion of a, an extensive uh, vinyl collection that I have in my studio, but these are some uh, records that we swap in and out depending on our mood. And the season. And the season, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and our children, um, our boys are now teenagers, but they're both really into vinyl, and um, we've loved incorporating a record player. They caught the into, bug. Yeah, they've caught the bug, yeah. and we love having an actual record player out to be used. Yep. In this room, I chose another neutral wallpaper. Um, as colorful and vibrant as most of my rooms are, I do love um, neutral backdrops, um, especially when we've got art that we want to yep. display, details that I want to pop against it. So in this room, I chose this classic wallpaper. Um, hang it's hanging on the walls. We added it behind the bookshelves and it just creates a beautiful backdrop to have pieces we love set against, including this room's mirror, this bamboo pagoda mirror over another game table from that confinement shop, and these two chalkware pieces flanking it that are um, from Facebook Marketplace. The rug in here is my very first antique rug. This was given to me by my grandmother. We had it in the city. We have it in here. Um, there's something about it that just thrills me. Yep. Um, it's, it's, I remember it being hers. I remember it in the house I grew up in. I remember it in our house in Boston. And I just love that we were able to use it in this space. It creates such a cozy, um, warm environment yep. when we're together in this room. Um, above my sweet girl, Evie, who is asleep on the sofa now, <laughs> are four of my favorite collages done by my husband. Eight. Uh, eight. Sorry, sorry, sorry. And I need you, I need you to explain the process behind these. Uh, these, these, I, I make a, uh, uh, I guess starting in, um, I'm a photographer by trade, but, uh, starting in, uh, January of 2017, 
I gave myself a test that I would try to make something every day uh, and try to keep it under an hour so that I could get on with the rest of my day. And that process became making a collage every day. And I would make one before everyone woke up and before the kids went to school and then I'd be done and then I'd have that. Uh, and so this series represents uh, part of that and I ended up making through uh, a full two years of every <laughs> single day making something. Uh, and one of the things that I love about these is a lot of these have uh, architectural plans as the, the backing paper and to me that feels, there's a place in my heart for that because my father is an architect and these aren't his plans uh, even though he's given me uh, plenty of plans it, it feels it feels nice for me to use them uh, in my work and it's all cut paper it's very time-consuming very detailed work he cuts out every like every bird in that piece there is cut out by hand um, blades. Yeah. and the process went on for so long that he called it his art every day and I called it his art every damn day because <laughs> it was relentless. He would bring a suitcase full of his paper cutting tools on vacations and for weekends away. And um, even up by the lake, he would set up a little card table and be <laughs> cutting out paper. Um, but they are fantastic um, pieces. Each one has a story to tell. And um, I was thrilled uh, to be able to display. And now I have thousands of them. <laughs> <laughs> Each one is stunning. Stephen and I grew up about an eighth of a mile from one another until I was maybe seven years old. We didn't know each other at the time. We just happened to live in the same town, in the same neighborhood. And then I moved away to, again in the same town. And we did not meet again until we met in Cambridge, Massachusetts in like uh, 1988, I think. 87 turning 88 or Is 98, right. 97. 90, yeah, no, it was right before the millennium. Um, we met in the late 90s. But oh, I'm gonna get it. I have this photograph that was taken of me riding my tricycle in our driveway. And in the very background, you can see Stephen on his blue chopper bicycle. <laughs> I saw it one day and I said, oh my gosh, that is definitely him, definitely on his bike with his sister who's across the street talking to one of her childhood friends who lived directly across the street from us. So this is just a moment in time that foretold. Meant, meant yeah. to be, yeah. <laughs> Even though you didn't experience it together, you experienced it at the same time. So we remember the same candy store and the same movie theater and the same ice cream parlor, yeah. uh, the same library. Um, yeah which is none of it's there anymore, but uh, uh, we have those memories yeah. and a little bit of overlap. So That's it's right. really, it's been fun. The last thing I want to share about this space is these wonderful overstuffed zebra armchairs. I love them against the wallpaper, against the art we have hanging behind them, and I love them with the rug. Um, just to me, wonderful um, patterns and textures make this room super cozy. Before we leave the room, I just want to uh, open a door or close the door and show you uh, a piece behind it that um, that I took at, a, at a, one of our favorite vacations together in Paris. And this is, a, the, I guess, the Museum of Hunting and Fishing. Where yes. These animals are out and about in this beautiful home that was, it was, I guess, a, a, a home and then turned into a museum. A very traditional Parisian home. Um, turned into a museum with wonderfully modern elements, but also kept some of the tradition. So throughout the yeah. space, you'll see these wonderful tapestries, and it's then life-size, um, life like actual deer. taxidermied elk, I think. So this is just a photograph of a moment in the museum that we enlarged, Stephen enlarged, that we hang here because the colors are yeah. stunning against the wallpaper. And it's a surprise when you close the door. All right, now let's head to the kitchen. Welcome to our kitchen. Um, we love this room. We spend a lot of time in here as a family. It's where we eat all our family meals, um, where Stephen and I spend cozy winter mornings because there is this deeply charming fireplace and a sitting area against these beautiful windows. Um, and this is such a cozy room to be in. Um, early winter mornings, waiting for the kids to get dressed to head to school. Another repurposed piece from our city home is this light fixture that we hung here above the table. It was in the boys' room, and I just um, 
like the openness and the graphicness of it in this really traditional setting. This wall is stunning with um, paneled wood. We hung a very traditional painting from my grandmother over the mantelpiece, and I love the juxtaposition of these two um, different styles together. When we moved into the house, the kitchen was much darker. Um, the cabinets were cherry. We painted them white. Um, we replaced the backsplash with a really simple ceramic subway tile and took out the dark green um, granite countertop and replaced it with this honed Carrera, which I love and I think wears like iron. I know a lot of people are nervous about marble in kitchens, but when it's honed, it's much less delicate and there's something about it. When it does get a little bit etched, I don't mind. That's the nature of the beast. I find it just an element. I love the look of the stone. I don't mind when it etches a little bit. We have this beautiful kitchen window over our sink. Um, the cabinet boxes on either side. I intended to order glass doors for them, but we got so used to them being open that we just decided to leave them that way. I put the wallpaper behind to sort of make them feel and look um, more finished. So it's where we keep our everyday dishes and glassware. We even hang art in our kitchen. And in fact, this is one of my very favorite pieces by a local artist. Um, it's got my favorite jewel tones and the subject matter is so lovely. And there's this little bit of a gold coin that she's captured um, at the bottom. I just find it stunningly beautiful. When we painted the kitchen, we also painted this portion of the room. It's our pantry and refrigerator. And I painted it a different color than the rest of the cabinetry because I wanted it to read a little bit more like a furniture piece. I added this metal secretary to the space for some height and some contrast. Um, we use it for storage, napkins, envelopes, things of that nature. This is where I keep the rest of my spun cotton menagerie. This is the same artist who did the dragon in my office. Um, I have mostly big cats, a fox, a zebra, and she even made me a custom Evie. And we have um, a, a turkey. turkey. <laughs> <laughs> Some beautiful brass pieces. This is um, a camera. Um, this is a camera, but it's actually a flask. The um, cup is on the lens. Starting there, I'll talk about, uh, there's, we have two okay. memory photographs here, and I call them memory photographs because they're purposefully uh, blurry, but this was a view that we had uh, out of our children's room when they were young, and this is the Sitco sign, which is over the, uh, this, this intersection in Boston uh, called Kenmore Square. And these are, this is sort of lights at night there, and this is the blurry sign. The and, Sitco sign was what you saw from our boys room it was an over it's by Fenway it's an enormous um, neon <laughs> sign yep. but it's very charming to those of us who lived in, live lived in Boston um, it's sort of a landmark and when our youngest was little he called it my triangle he yeah. called it his triangle my triangle yeah. and it is such a nostalgic thing for us and having it here in our kitchen yeah. um, is a thrill. And most people recognize that yeah, it is the Sitco yeah. sign. Like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> as blurry as it is. Yeah. And then you have to see this one too. This is traffic in Kenmore Square, and you can just see the taillights. Um, headlights and taillights. Headlights and taillights. Yeah. Um, this, again, pieces of the city in our suburban home make us really happy. Yeah. Uh, one of my other very favorite pieces is right down here, and this is this hollow lamp that we, Allison, filled with our kids' um, matchbox cars. I think they have many more than that, but that's what we could jam in there. But we, I love the, the, the feeling of that and the color that comes out of it, and I just it's very playful. When they were little, they were horrified that we'd pilfered these to add to the lamp. <laughs> but now that they're sort and of overplaying like with, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, um, it's playful. Uh, it doesn't necessarily read as matchbox cars right away from a distance. It just looks like an interesting lamp base. But when you get up close, um, yeah. I love it. It's very sweet. Other features in this space that I absolutely love are the, this big picture window here. Um, it overlooks our carriage house out in back. And now let's head into the sunroom.
through this sweet little pantry is our sunroom. It is often the last room people see when they come over. It was the last room we saw when we toured the house 10 years ago. Yep. It is generally people's favorite. It is so full of charm from the Dutch door to the brick floor, to the ceiling beams, to the fourth fireplace. It is just chock full of really charming old traditional details, but it's also quite bright and airy because it has three walls of windows. Previous owners had had window treatments on the windows, but we really just wanted it to feel open and airy, sort of an extension of the outside. Um, this is where we celebrate Christmas. This is where we have gatherings of friends. Put the um, tree over the tree in the goes corner. in the corner and then Stephen decorates the crab apple tree um, with thousands of white lights. So it is magical in the winter between the Christmas tree and the decorated tree and the fire going. Um, it's a really, really special room. On the floor, I have a, another vintage rug. This one we got in an estate sale two doors down. Um, the owner of the home had lived there for 60 or so years. Yeah. And when she left, um, she was quite old. And I found this rug and I love that we were sort of keeping it in the neighborhood. In the neighborhood yeah. um, and it really reads so beautifully against the brick floor. Between holidays and gatherings of friends, we want to be able to fit a lot of people. So we've got all different sorts of chairs placed around the room. Um, these faux bois wingbacks are two of my very favorites. They're one of the first things we bought when we moved into the house. For a while they lived in the living room, but when we put the zebra wallpaper up, yeah. I moved them in here. Um, I just love them with the wood beams. They've got that beautiful brown color in them. Here we have two armchairs. Um, I like the open back. Um, when you're driving down the driveway, you see into this room and the back is a really pretty sculptural view from the driveway. Um, here we have this console table covered in leopard, a leopard print. It um, keeps the, the side of the room open, but also gives your eyes sort of a place to stop. This is another Facebook Marketplace treasure. This table was $25 <laughs> because it had been terribly damaged by the owner's dog who had chewed at least three of the corners down to, to nubs. We bought it as a project to do and we were able to repair the corners quite well. I covered the top to hide a multitude of sins. I covered the top with vinyl, grass cloth, and then we painted the whole thing. Um, the scale of it, the shape of it, the color, I love it. It was just sort of another perfect find for the space we were trying to fill. In this corner, we have the last of our four fireplaces in this house. This room doesn't have a lot of wall space because of all the windows. So we decided to get a little bit creative and we've hung this gallery wall over the built-in cabinetry. Um, it's this wonderful layered effect. It's a little bit wonky because we tried to hang most all of it on knobs or hinges. Um, it's easy enough to remove the pieces when we need to get into the cabinets, but we don't have to access them that often. And I just love that it turns sort of this very traditional flat white space into something with more vibrancy and color. Um, this, in, this arrangement incorporates many different mediums. We have cyanotype, painting, um, an iPhone photo taken from an RV driving down <laughs> Route 95 South, paintings, um, watercolors. It's an arrangement of very special pieces to us, a lot of black and white, but some really vibrant pops of color. This etched brass tray table was a wedding gift to my parents many years ago, and I love the shine that it adds to this corner, especially in the spring and summer when we don't have um, fires in the fireplace. We've used swivel chairs for the fireplace because it gives us the opportunity to turn them to the fireplace when it is winter and we have a fire going, but we're also able to turn them into the room uh, when we're entertaining. They're just extremely versatile and comfortable and before we leave, I have to show you this one charming detail. Uh, when we were still living in the city, I gave this to Stephen for 
a gift and it is this tiny little house nightlight and we just love that we actually ended up in a house it's not that dissimilar from this one and we keep it here on the fireplace as a sweet little detail a few other details before we finish I have collected the see no evil speak no evil hear no evil monkeys for years you may have actually seen them around the house while we were touring through here are two of my favorites um, another quirky thing that we keep around the house are these little busts. Um, we have one outside on our patio. We have one tucked on our bookshelf. We have one here. Um, just a, a funny, unusual detail that makes us smile. <laughs> this is also the room where I showcase a few of my favorite needlepoint pillows. Um, this is one that I recently completed that I love in this space with these beautiful blues um, in the rattan pattern. Um, over on this swivel chair is a vintage one that I collected a few years back of this wonderful um, foo dog slash dragon. I think it's a foo dog. And then my very favorite is another one that I stitched. Um, I'm not for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Homeworthy, for touring our beloved home. We've really enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Be sure to go to homeworthy.com for exclusive content, shopping guides, and so much more.